Hey guys, how's it going? Vegan Bandit here. Uh, today what I thought I was going to do is uh, something I've done a little bit in the past and I found was um, pretty pretty popular, a pretty popular video. I'm going to go back on uh, over some of my old game footage and kind of do a running commentary um, on, I guess, my thought process and any uh, like particular decisions I made and why I made them throughout the game. Uh, this video, I don't think anyone at a diamond or higher level is going to get a lot out of. Uh, <clears throat> this is mostly focused at people kind of in the gold to platinum range. Um, and I, I guess uh, I guess below that as well. Uh, I assume you know a little bit about the game already. Um, but I'm going to go over like some choices that I make as a mid laner uh, throughout the laning phase, throughout the team fights. Um, the reason I chose this video is because I, I did pretty well this game. I think my final score was something like 14-2-2. We did end up losing, but from my perspective at least, I feel like uh, this was some of my some of my cleaner gameplay. It was pretty funny at near the end of the game when I was I was 12-0-2 at one point and one of my teammates uh, got upset at me for uh, they told me off for KDA padding when everyone else died in a team fight and I managed to survive. Uh, yeah, no comment. <laughs> I, you can be the judge of that, whether you thought I was just having good positioning or whether you thought I was uh you know just padding my KDA let me know in the comments below what you think but uh I, I think uh, this is some of my finer gameplay so um yeah without any further ado let's get into the let's get into the footage um uh, just going to put it on uh, hero chase for myself yep I've already done that <clears throat> uh and as we go through I'll be looking at my build and just kind of talking about my uh, thought process so in this game, I'm against a howitzer uh, as Belica. That's my matchup. Now, one of the most important things to do in the very first few seconds of the game is look at your opponent and make a decision, especially if you have a card choice between, like, say, Font of Experience or uh, Advanced Evolution. Advanced Evolution, of course, giving you that sustain. If I think the enemy laner is going to poke me a lot, I'll always try and go for that Font of Experience card because that's going to give me the sustain to stay in lane and keep farming. But I just have... Well, partly because Howitzer is kind of mediocre at the moment. But also, I just didn't feel like a Howitzer was going to poke me that much. So, I just went for the fun of experience. So, yeah, just something to be in line and keep in mind. And when you, when you get to lane, always check your opponent's items. So, I can see that he has a Rejuvenation Potion. Um... So me having myself having fun of experience, I'm going to uh, just play really passively. I I win out if we don't trade, uh, just due to a, just due to the item matchup there. So my positioning you can see right now. Uh, I'm sitting up on this platform here on the right. Now the reason I'm doing this um, is I know my jungler is in my strong jungle on my right hand side, and I know most junglers I can't see their jungler, but most junglers will start on their on their um. That's their left side there. And usually that's where the junglers are going to be. They're going to be either on your right side. Your right jungle is going to be on your right side most of the time. And their jungle is going to be on their left side most of the time. So your left side. So you position yourself such that if a jungler comes into your lane to gank you, they're going to have further to go. Now, I did miss my knock up there. I should have waited for the slow to go down. Um, and here, I, I just stepped a little bit too far forward, not respecting uh, the range. Really not a not a good mechanical showing there of my of my uh, missing my knock up a few times, but that's the low point of the game, I promise you. Right now, I'm j I'm just being very aware of how it's his uh, rocket range, and the uh, not <laughs> aware that it could almost kill me. That was just very lucky on my part there. You don't want to never overstay in your lane uh, when you're that low. I, I was definitely risking it a little bit there. Uh, okay, so I go back. I've got at one point an intellect, so I'm picking up my advanced evolution to give me that lane sustain. Next, I'm... I th probably next I'm going to take my uh, vitality point. I've got healing towers gem. So um, that's going to give me much more sustain when I'm sitting at the tower. to comment on right now when it gets to the point of uh, uh, three minutes I did miss it because I had to back but what you should be doing at odd minutes uh, on every every 
starting at three minutes and every two minutes. You're going to want to go set up to contest to one of the rivers. Um, there's a couple of things you got to think about. So, do we know? Do you know where the jungler is? Um, do you know where their mid laner is? Where's their mid laner going? Uh, usually, the jungler will go for the the enemy jungler will go for the buff on your left. So, never drop down in through that fog or that checking. What you can do is you can kind of poke your head over the over the wall without dropping down to give you vision and see where they are. See if there's anyone down there. If you have order, you could pick up a ward. That's not a bad idea to place. Just drop a ward down there. But it's, uh, if you if you can, it's important to always contest those river buffs. So right now, I'm in a pretty big advantage to how it's set. He used up his rejuvenator potions, so he actually doesn't have any items right now, any any cards. So I get that knock up because have the how it's actually paused there to fire his rocket, and that's gonna be perfect opportunity to to get my um to get my knock up off. Uh, and then just took a bit of damage from the Chimera Gang and finished off with the ult just in time. Well, if you kill the enemy mid laner or they die elsewhere or they're just on the other side of the map. Um, it's a good idea to kind of shove out your lane if you can do so safely get it under the enemy tower because then they'll just lose a lot of xp uh, by the time they get back and also it'll take a little bit of damage um you don't want to overstay though because especially if you're low after a fight the enemy jungle could easily come in and punish you uh make sure you always have enough mana for any escape spell kind of defensive cc spell you have like a belica knock up you don't want to, you don't want to push unless you know the you know every unless you can see where everyone is on the map and you know yeah no risk of getting ganked. Uh, I want to try and save something to be able to get out. And so when there's nothing to do, you've got two choices I guess. If you have healing towers, just sit under your tower, generate up the you know restore your health and mana a little bit more. But even if you're not ganking a lane, if you've got nothing to do, if you're not CSing in lane at the moment. You know, if your lane's pushed up or something, just go hide. Go stand somewhere where they can't get vision on you. Um, because that way, the enemy mid laner might say miss, mid is missing. You know, it might uh, might scare one of the um, one of the other lanes into backing up a little bit. You kind of it kind of helps you apply a little bit of pressure without really doing anything. So I see the howitzer is just using his ult to kind of clear. That makes me think he's about to uh, recall. So I'm going to just pressure, the, push the lane back as hard as I can right now. Of course, I don't want to go too hard. I don't know where the jungler is. I know he was low just now. Um, but I don't know whether he recalls. So I'm trying to... I probably just don't quite have enough mana to uh, cast a knock up there. So I don't want to push out too far. Of course, if, uh, if you're not actively last hitting a minion, I mean, if you're not pushing, just go sit under your tower. Get that, mi get that minor regen from the um, healing towers real quick. Even if it's only a second, it all adds up. I'm going to put that layout just on for the... Um, just so we can see the map there. Sorry, I'm not sure how to... Get rid of this bar at the bottom and also see the um see the top right there okay so i actually dc'd for a hot minute there so um this is gonna be even better this is gonna be now me playing from a little bit behind so you get to see my thought process there the howitzer has almost double my cs at the moment he's taking my first tower in the uh, three minutes that i was ganked by epic um so what i gotta be mindful of don't want to push too hard unless maybe I see the howitzer going somewhere else or if I'm going to rotate. Um, if, you, if you want to go gank another lane, you got to just make sure your lane is pushed up if it's uh, safe to do so. That's me lagging out for a bit there. Awesome. How good is this game? Now, uh, all right, I see a fight breaking on left. I'm going to head over. Just use my... Uh, I've got my Astral Leap card. I find it's a nice filler because it helps, just helps me get around the map a little bit. Hmm. 
So I, I dropped the um, I dropped the drone there. I mean, I, I did see that the I remember seeing that the Grux had no mana. I just wanted to make sure he didn't get any mana from I don't know if he had some card I didn't check, but um, maybe if he had like um, you know if he had like a mana reactor or something. Now I did want to disengage, but I see the Chimera kind of goes back in, so I gotta. I guess get back in there and help him out. He continues to, to hit those minions there. I guess to get his keep his health gen stacks up. Um, but I'm trying to play pretty cautious because I know I'm still going to be behind that howitzer behind most of the enemies in levels and in cards. Um, yeah, just just always a good practice if he, you know if you crash. But even if you don't, even if you're just behind, you got ganked a few times. Just focus really hard on playing safely. This is me not really watching my map into the last second. Uh, although I think that Grux might have actually been stealth. I'm not sure there. Uh, but be careful when you're backing. There's no harm backing, recalling at the back of the tower. Might take an extra second or two. Um, but hey, it's probably worth it. Alright, Quang lands a tether, which unfortunately actually makes me miss my um uh, my knock up there by just a millimeter. If you see someone else is about to land a CC, you should just wait to land your CCC. So I took an extra second or two to get into that fight because I was going for the um going for the stealth buff. I actually think the replay is kind of bugged out a little bit here. Uh, it's not showing up with the deaths on the, for the enemy team. So I'm just waiting around the corner out of vision just in case that Grux went up to fight uh, our steel. And I could just get the knock up through the wall. <clears throat> I guess another point is you don't need to if you don't need to show yourself um again just stand behind the stand behind a wall there's no need to um need to give them vision on where you are if there's if you don't need to so i did pick up another kill slowly catching back up uh, know that the howitzer is still about 25 CS ahead of me. Um, but for the most part, catching back up. I think my cards might also be bugs because I don't know why I would drop the, um... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know why I would have dropped the Astral but I think I did. It's just the replay system. Yeah, well, you see the Chimera running around on zero health there, so... Awesome. Awesome, uh, replay system there. Grux uh, ults to come in. I just knock him up. Make sure we keep our distance here. He's got to, you know, just wait, wait out that, that kind of ult. He's going to be doing more damage for a little bit. So if you just stand back, he's going to completely waste it. Okay. This is somewhere where you might drop like a drone behind the wall if you can. Just so he's going to be getting like decent value. Um... You know, and they can't, they can't come and, uh, Come and try and kill it. Now, I, th I think I was asking for the guys to back off there, which is why I went to mid. Um, unfortunately, I think they just kept kept going in. That was every since when we lost the Chimera. That was never really going to be our fight. I think I'm recalling? Yeah, okay, so the recalling animation is also bugged. I think half my team is wandering around with no health at the moment. Enemy towers 
Yeah, awesome. My items are bugged as well. This is going, uh, this is going really well. <laughs> Hope you guys are still getting something out of this. Okay, so what I've got right now, I've got, I picked up Glycerin Dawn on Bellica. I really like that card on Bellica because it's really easy to land that. You knock up, you drop your Void Bomb, follow up with a Fireball. That's a lot of damage already. Uh, and then you can drop your drone. Um, and if, they don't, if they're a caster and they don't have much mana, you ult. And that combination just does a crazy amount of damage. So you can... I, I have one-shot mages without being too fed with that build. Uh, as long as they're pretty low on mana. Especially late game against the caster. That, that ult, the Bellica ult, just does a lot of work. So... One, one thing to be aware of that I think is a very underrated concept. Okay, there's two things here I want to talk about. The first is the concept of resetting. When you're pushing after, say, say you win a fight and, you know, maybe you pick up a tower and inhib or a, you pick up Fangtooth or, or Prime, whatever. Now, you've just, you know, you've, you've gotten a big advantage there. <clears throat> but let's say, all Prime's a little bit different, I guess, but let's say you pick up, I guess, any other, like, objective or you just got some kills and you're pushing. Um, just want to say, you know, make sure you get really good at using the uh, astral leap quickly to get out of get out of tight situations there. So this is an example of where that where I was talking about the drone placement. Um, just in that corner there. But yeah, so the, the there you go. The, uh, the astral leap to get the uh, get the catch up there is really nice. Um, just just don't hesitate if someone comes at you and you have Astral Leap, because as soon as you take a little bit of damage, it's going to, um, you know, you're going to, it's going to be too late. So just don't hesitate, turn around and just do it instantly. Now, okay, back to what I was talking about before. Um, so resetting. There's, there will be some points in the game. This is kind of maybe a little bit of counter counterintuitive concept, especially if someone hasn't played a MOBA. Um, but at, there are some points in the game where the enemy will just... Even if you're ahead in score, in resources, you know, your team has more gold, whatever. There will be some points in the game where the enemy team is just stronger than you in that moment. One of the best examples is if you've just killed a couple of the enemy team, uh, you guys maybe are a little bit low. Um, you push, and sometimes people just keep pushing into, you know, the enemy team spawns and kind of fights them again. This is really bad because what the, what's happened is the enemy team is reset. They're all fresh. They've just gotten full health and mana. Not only that. They have more items, and so it's possible because you know they just went shopping and you guys haven't. So it's possible for some points in the game for the enemy team if they've just gone shopping, they might actually have more power than you. They might have better cards than you in that moment because you guys haven't gone shopping um, after that fight. So you got to reset. Um, you you got to reset before you, the next fight, unless you know there will be there will be circumstances when that's not necessarily the case, but. Uh, you just got to be aware of that, that there, there will be points when the enemy team is stronger than you. So that's one thing I wanted to talk about. Um, I've actually forgotten the other thing because I've talked about so many stuff, things in between. If I come, if I think of it, I'll come back, come back to it. But um, yeah, that's that's really crucial. So if your team's pushing just too hard, they just you know want to push into death, push into the next fight. Just uh, you know maybe ping a retreat a few times, type reset or something. Uh, not much you can do with it is don't listen to you, which happens pretty often, but at the very least, you should, you know, make it go back so that, um, hopefully your team gets the, uh, gets the idea. So my thought process there, it didn't really work out because the ward was there. I mean, that that was a guaranteed kill by that point. You couldn't see that, but the Zinx was on nothing. So there was no point of me walking out that fog wall, giving the enemy team vision of where I am. Better for me, I mean, like I said, it didn't work because the ward was there. But better for me to always try and keep the team, enemy team guessing. A, a MOBA is so much... It's like a strategy game where so much of it is about information. Um... It's, it's, yeah, it's an information game in that uh, the more the more info that you have, 
and the less that they have, the better for you guys, your team. That's why wards are so important, because uh, you see what the enemy team is, and uh, in, you know, in a lot of ways, that's that's as important uh, than a bit of extra power, a bit of extra tankiness. On some mages, I actually run uh, order just so I can get wards. Um, well, not just so I can get wards. Like there will be other items in there that I want, but I always try and pick up a ward. If pick up wards, slamp ladders. If I have uh, order. So not sure what the enemy team is there. I see the uh, jungler. I just instantly turn around and flash. Not gonna hesitate. Not gonna mess with that. Steal ults in. Um, I don't think that was it's probably not the best of ideas because yeah, there's four of them there. I missed my knock up at the start. So I just wanted to back out, but the steel I think just committed to the fight. Maybe he thought he couldn't have gotten out by that point, which is okay. So on the map you can see the Quang looks kind of out of place. Uh, I passed kind of weirdly there. Not the not the quickest way. I probably lost a second or two, but it doesn't matter. I think the Quang's not going to make it out anyway. <clears throat> Something to get good at is, uh, you know, getting getting a good feel for how long it takes to get from um, to get from one lane to another, or to get from certain points in the map to to another. Because then you you, you kind of know how much time you have when um, one team is, um, you know, when someone's rotating, how much time you have to get out of a certain spot before you're in trouble. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll look up because I don't know that off, I actually don't know that off the top of my head I got a general sense of how long it takes, um, but I'll look up those numbers and put them in the uh, description just for you guys there. Don't forget, the, one of the advantages of staying right in the back line as a mage, if you have Astral Leap, is um, you know you can be dishing out damage, and as soon as they turn to try and focus you, if you haven't been, been taking damage, you can still do that that dash away. Um, but positioning is one of the most important things. I, I think, for me personally, it's one of the biggest things that's still, um, apart from mechanical skill, that's still holding me back from going any further. Um, there will be times when, you know, I'll, I'll most of the time have good positioning, but just, you know, it only takes one little mistake to uh, one little bit of complacency to completely throw that all away and get picked out. Uh, and as one of the team's main damage dealers, especially early to mid game, um, if you go down, that's a, that's a huge loss for your team. Here, Fang Tooth is up. We're kind of positioning around it. Just in a general sense, um, if your team has the lead, just go for the Fang Tooth on cooldown. Like, be there 10 seconds ahead, or start pinging it 20 seconds before it spawns. Um, or if you're a support, ward up. This is kind of a weird fight. They're all in there fighting uh, the Yin. I don't really want to get in there because I know I'll get picked off kind of on the side there. I think the howitzer was uh, lazy recalling there, he just died instantly. Enemy double kill. I think I might have altered them there, but again with the uh, animations it's kind of hard to tell. Um, but that was particularly bad, don't lazy back, make sure you get well back enough. Be aware if, you know, if they have a stealth, if rivers just spawned, think to yourself, hey, do they maybe have a stealth river buff? Is someone coming to get me? Is there a Kalari stealthing around? Do I know where everyone is in the map? If not, maybe I should back a little bit further back under a tower or something. So one of your jobs is um, when you're when you're doing objectives, one of your main jobs um, as a mid laner, especially with mid lane with CC, but also if you have damage, you're kind of on zoning duty. Not a lot of mid laners have a lot of sustained damage for those objectives. That's more the job of the jungler, maybe the off laner and the carry. 
but the support in your role is mostly, generally, to just make sure you keep the enemy off that objective. You know, kind of threaten them away from the entry points. Uh, I was trying to, you know, threaten that Zinx away with, uh, with my, with my knock-up. Just to, just to slow them down and reduce the chance of them, um, getting in range to steal, steal the objective. So here I'm looking for someone to get out of place. I'm kind of trying to hide around that corner. I'm looking for someone to get out of place so I can get a knock-up. Go for that pick. Just missed that one on the, um, on the yin there. Or whoever that is. Zinx, I think that might have been. I think my score must have been completely bugged out by this one as well, because I had way more kills than the two. Um, anyway, so we lost the Kai. Uh, probably went in a little bit deep. The correct play in that case was probably... Uh, our Quang was pushing le uh, left lane. So we should have just been sieging whilst... Um, just sieging up. Try not to take too big a fight while Sao Quang pushes the left lane. Uh, but the Kai went in deep and everyone kind of got picked off one by one. When you're, when you're solo queuing, if, don't be afraid. I mean, sometimes you see your team go in and you think, oh, I have to go in. Or, you know, they make it, you, you think maybe they know more than something that I don't. But if you feel like you guys shouldn't be fighting, probably actually best for you to just not go in. There will be times when, even if you disagree with the call of going in, it's be still better to follow up just so you, your team isn't alone. But if they're going into a ridiculous situation, then, I mean, just don't go in, honestly. Anyway, so I think at the end of that last fight when we were sieging their tower is when um, uh, our support accused me of uh, playing, padding my KDA. I mean, honestly, I was just trying to, I was playing a little bit passive, but I just wanted to, you know, work, w watch my positioning, make sure I don't get picked off. And uh, I kind of disagreed with the call of going in there. Alright, so I'm just waiting to clear out these minions. Try, where possible, try and clear the minions before they get to your tower. Um, this one wasn't too bad. So let us, I let the siege minion get under tower, which isn't a big deal, but uh, if you can kind of delay them until your minions get there to catch them, because the siege minions are going to be hitting your tower if they're under your tower, no matter what else is there. So, um... Yeah, and they, they if, especially if there's two or three in a wave, they're going to be doing a lot of damage to your tower that you don't need to be taking. So, um, yeah, just try and make sure those, at least the siege minions are caught outside of the tower, stop outside of your tower range. Alright, letting my jungler go in first, oh, sorry, the support go in first because he's tankier. I'm trying to stay well back. Be aware of what kind of spells the enemy team has, whether they have any, like, range CC. If they have a hook, make sure you know the range of that. Sorry, like a Richter pull. Make sure you know the range of that and just stay out of it. If they have a Howie knockback, like the mine, stay out of that range. Uh, it's, for almost all kind of mid laners, your job is not to be the front liner. Your job is to wait back, do damage safely, apply some CC. Apply some crowd control. Get some stuns off and stay alive. Probably the only the only role that I would trade my life for is I'd, I'd do it, I'd trade my life gladly for a carry if they're doing well. Um, uh, anyone else, it's just not really worth it. You're too valuable as a damage dealer. Okay, so here we don't have any minions. Don't have any minion waves, so... Should be getting back. I think we're kind of getting picked apart here. The Murdoch did a lot of damage to me. 
I probably should have backed off, uh, but by that point it was kind of team fight was kind of over. That was actually my first death of the game. I'm pretty sure. The uh, <laughs> the replay system is totally bugged out right now. All enemies have fallen. So I'm gonna skip ahead just a little bit. I think the game is basically downhill from here. Um, I'm gonna check back just a little bit. So they're sieging the tower here. I see an opportunity to get a knock up and some damage on uh, on that Murdoch, but it's you know after I've done that, I kind of want to back off a little bit. Um, Yeah, there was, so I, the rest of my team played that pretty well. There was no need for me to kind of be that far forward after. Again, it's just trying to play way, right back. Be very aware of uh, of the, the potential to turn that around. I'm going to talk a little bit about build. Oh, interestingly, it's actually uh, fixed itself. My position on the team has changed. Um, so my final build is, I guess, uh, kind of a, some of my some of the casters that I run. I run a build uh, of Glycerin Dawn, Atomic Soldier, Sleeper Agent, and maybe at the end of the game, I'll swap Sleeper Agent for um, uh, Amplification Engineer, especially if they have a lot of tanks, and especially if there's not like a high priority target for me to silence. If they had a Gideon, I would keep the silence. I would keep the sleep raging so I could silence some out of his ulti. If they had maybe like a Fae, someone who does a lot of damage that would get up close to me. Um, but I'm not too worried about the howitzer. So uh, realistically, end game, I'd probably want to switch out that sleep raging for um, amplification engineer. kind of cards that I use to curve. Astral Leap is one of my favorite curve cards. I also have um, Soldier of Fortune in there, which uh, I think is a little bit underrated. You've got to be careful with that. So I, I also remember the other thing I wanted to talk about. It was It's similar to the concept of resetting, but um, there will, in the, in the same vein, there'll be points in the game where your team will be, you know, your, your the two teams will swap, kind of go back and forth in terms of which team is stronger. So, for example, if, if you just recall as a mid lane and you've picked up some damage cards, you know, you spent your points, you've just what's gotten what's called a power spike, which means at that point, you're probably going to be stronger than the enemy mid laner, especially if they haven't recalled in a little bit. So that's the sort of time when you want to be picking a fight. If you're on communications with your team, you can go one step further and... Uh, yeah, that was pretty weird. <laughs> It's a bug flying away. You can go one step further and you can all recall at the same time to make sure that uh, you'll have the power spike at the same time. So, back to Soldier of Fortune. Oh, I guess I'll come to that a little bit. I silenced the Murdoch, but he's just doing too much damage. He got to the back line and there's no one really there to stop him. So I think that's about where the game wraps up, but... Uh yeah, just one more thing I wanted to talk about. Soldier of Fortune is a nice curve card that allows you to execute an enemy minion or jungle minion to uh, gain, some, and as, as well as getting the gold for that experience for that, you get extra golden experience. I like to get that if the lane is really slow, if the gameplay is kind of slow. Uh, I'll get that as a curve card. Um, you know, just, just so I, I can... It gives some extra mana and mana regen as well, so... Give me extra assist extra sustain um, but also yeah we're just focusing on farming anyway then that's probably the way to go you be letting me watch that playing at the moment um, you, want, you want to be careful with that though because that what that means is 
compared to something like Invader Mage, you're going to be a lot less strong at that point of the game. So that's when you don't want to be picking up fights, ideally. And the other way to look at it in reverse is if something like an objective like Prime is coming up or you think your team's going to want to push, or the enemy team is pushing your lane, you're probably going to want to grab something more damaging instead. Like you're probably going to want to swap those items out for something, something that gives you a bit more of a damage power spike. So um, that's a battle I wanted to cover. Um, so sorry about the the bugs. I made it a little bit harder to comment on things. Uh, as, oh, as you can see, I ended up fourteen to seven, accused of stat padding. <laughs> Let me know what you think. If you think that was fair, <laughs> or uh, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay. I hope you got a little bit out of it. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely put them down in the comments section below. Um, especially anything relating to mid laning, anything maybe support related is the other role I play. Um, but hope you guys enjoyed and. Uh, Please uh, like the video, subscribe if you enjoyed it, want to see more Paragon stuff. Um, and yeah, stay tuned and thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.